So the very popular uh, YouTube vlogger Venom Fang X has just posted a video um, expressing his uh, his feelings about the um, the reason rally and the uh, atheistic um, worldview that it will be celebrating. Uh, the Reason Rally is uh, a sort of conference slash con uh, concert, you know, sort of a, a celebration of the so-called secular movement. On the, on the Reason Rally's website, they, um, they claim to be the largest gathering, or that they will be at least on March 24th, of this year, the largest gathering of the secular movement in world history. Um, and, you know, I've tried to engage with Venom, Fen, Venom Fang X in the past, and uh, in those videos I was disagreeing with his, um, his arguments or trying to uh, offer a different perspective that would maybe be more effective in um, the conversation that we would all like to see happen between, you know, secularity and um, the religious uh, worldview broadly conceived. Both of these terms, you know, um, secularism and religiosity are um, very vague, right? They, they contain a lot of uh, room to uh, explore definitions, right? It's, it's hard to pin down what exactly the secular is and what exactly the religious is. The atheists, you know, who will be attending this conference and, and uh, the scientific materialists like P.Z. Myers and Richard Dawkins who will be speaking at this conference will you know, present a worldview in which uh, to be secular is to be rational and to be religious is uh, to be irrational. They contrast, uh, the atheistic materialists will contrast reason with belief or faith which they equate. The, uh, belief is um, belief in a religious doctrine is uh, sort of taking on on someone else's authority on a religious figure's authority or a religious text's authority uh, that an event occurred or that a um, <clears throat> statement is true of the nature of reality. Whereas a scientific or a rational belief um, or, or cognition will be based on experience, right? Or at least the testimony of someone else's experience. And by experience, the materialist always means um, sensory, physical sensory experience, uh, an experience of the three-dimensional world um, of spatially extended uh, objects matter, um, of spatially extended matter. And, you know, of course, even the materialist, when it comes down to it, relies upon mathematical uh, formulas to provide the causal, the most accurate causal descriptions of the nature of, of the physical world. And so, there's this element of immateriality right at the core of, of physics, and that is mathematics. And the fact that the human uh, mathematician's imagination is capable of somehow synchronizing with the fundamental patterns governing the structure and development of space-time. You know, somehow the mind of the scientist is congruent with 
the mind things. Um, and yes, I, I unlike uh, Ben and Fang, Fang X, who seems to still adopt a sort of anthropocentric perspective where only the human thinks and only the human has freedom, only the human is made in the image of God. I would say that the, the whole cosmos, in fact, is made in the image of God, and that nature is a is is a living creature, and that you know. Christianity doesn't have a monopoly on the truth. All of the entire history of human culture, you know, and, and human religion and spirituality is um, privy to divine revelation. And that, that all of human history is an attempt to tell the story of God's entrance into the world. So we can't be Christian proselytizers who are trying to convert everyone to our specific interpretation of a particular book written at a, at a, at a particular time by a particular people. You know, there are many books. There are many, many books in the world. And the spirit blows where it will. And, you know, comes to rational articulation not only in the books of physicists or in the Bible, but also in the Tao Te Ching, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, um, in, in the writings of Confucius, you know, in, in Plato and uh, Aristotle. Wisdom finds expression, the, 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 the mind of God finds expression in many languages. And so when we argue against a sort of atheistic materialism or secular uh, worldview, I think what we need to affirm is um, the indwelling presence of, of a spirit, of a spiritual reality that, you know, can't necessarily be codified or um, finally captured in the form of one particular religious traditions language. When we're dealing with the divine, you know, we're dealing with logos itself. And logos can differentiate into any number of, of human languages. Because human languages are finite. The logos is infinite. You know, and so while I myself have employed the same argument that Ben and Fang, Fang X is employing in his video, um, I wouldn't use it to attempt to convert someone uh, to a particular religion. I would use it to awaken one to the power of religion uh, in general. I think um, even though I personally tend to find inspiration from um, the Christian tradition, generally speaking, um, I've also found inspiration from other traditions, and, and I, I believe that people can find um, truth and reality and divinity in ways other than my own. I think that's what it comes down to. Um, so I think we need to realize that the universe is, is the image of, of God, not only the human. And the human's role is to become more like the universe, right? The human has a moral inclination towards the universal. Um, and this is reflected in the practice of science, which tries to discover the universal physical laws, right? What we can observe about the way the universe behaves. And it's always the way it should behave, right? Physics is the study of the past. and of the way we would expect it, uh, the universe, to behave in the future. But we can only say that it should behave that way. We don't actually know for sure that it will. And, you know, this is both a philosophical point that I think um, Hume proved um, several centuries ago, but it's also an empirical point that if we look at the history of the universe, there have been moments of transformation 
mutations, in fact, that um, you couldn't have predicted beforehand. Right? Initially, there's only the sort of uh, quantum foam, um, and then you know photons uh, are formed, and then all of a sudden, photons are are um, folded into protons and, and atoms, right? And and then atoms create stars. And each of these moments of transformation from um, photon to atom to star, and then from star to planet to cell, these are not only irreversible, um, but they're um, you know, not computable. If we were living in, in the pre-stellar uh, or the pre-living universe, you know, let's say 10 billion years ago, um, it would have been impossible for us to have looked at what was there and said, oh yes, life will necessarily emerge. You know, the universe is stochastic in that way, right? This isn't necessarily irrational, it's just creative. The, the universe is an ongoing process of creation rather than an already finished uh, artifact, right? Whatever God is, God is imminent in the world and keeps the world continually alive, continually evolving and unfolding what after the fact seems um, destined to occur, but what before the fact is only imaginable, um, but not not definitely uh, predictable. You know, so physics is a study of the past, and I think in some ways we could think of theology as the study of the future, or the study of what the universe ought to become, and of what the human role is in that uh, becoming in that making moral of, of the world that the human finds themselves within. You know, so this is, of course, things to talk about science and theology, physics and theology, but also anthropology, right? The human is the, the image of God, and the, the human is the sort of penultimate expression of the, of the universe. And then what you've got is what... Uh, the Christian, Buddhist, and Hindu philosopher uh, Raymond Panikkar called a, a cosmotheandric situation. You've got a reality which can only be uh, lived into conceptually in a Trinitarian way, where there is a relationship between the divine, the cosmos, and the human. I think that should be a sort of starting place for us, that you can't only have cosmos, you can't only have uh, humanity, and you can't only have God, that these three um, ways of relating to the world and sort of spheres of participation in the world have to be co-present to one another. Because when we only consider the, the cosmos and the human, you know, matter and mind in the sort of Cartesian paradigm, that is really underlying all secular atheistic materialism. Um, with with that sort of a um, a picture, um, you know, the universe has to be considered a dead thing, and without any divine inspiration. Um, <clears throat> I think instead of just looking at the way that, that the cosmos operates, we have to infer based on the harmony of the cosmos that a principle of beauty, an idea of beauty is at work, allowing the universe to be what it is. And that while the human being can appreciate that beauty, it, it cannot create it. You know, and the human can even participate, appreciate and participate in the creation of beauty, but only at a finite level. There's, you know, in other words, the human being can't create a universe. It can only shift the course of what's already been created. Whereas, to understand the universe itself, you need to imagine a creator. Um, 
a divinity, and, and theology will always be the attempt of the human and the cosmos to imagine its own creator. And, and these, these spheres of, of God, nature, or uni the universe, or, and the human are, are all um, co-arising and mutually dependent on one another. But um, in, the, in the end, they're just food for thought. So let me know how um, all of that went down. Uh, and if you're having trouble, if you're having any indigestion, um, please spit it out at me and uh, I'll try to chew it for you and, and give it back so maybe you'll, you'll like it a little better.